The horror novel Christine was originally published in April 1983, and production on the film began only a few days later. John Carpenter had previously released the film The Thing, which was a box office bomb. He therefore wanted to direct a safer film based on a novel from a best-selling author. The result is a Carpenter slasher film, but instead of Michael Myers, the threat is a 1958 Plymouth Fury. The film follows a teenager called Arnie, who purchases a possessed car that has a mind of its own. Hey guys, and welcome back to Garage Stephen Kingathon, where every day for the month of October, I review a Stephen King adaptation. And today we're talking about Christine. Whenever I talk to my friends about Christine, they always say, Oh, that's the stupid one. It's about the scary car. There's nothing scary about a car. Guys, let me tell you. I'm 23. I only got my driver's license when I was 22. Reason being, <laughs> I am terrified of cars. I don't know about you guys, but I was scared of driving a car for the longest time until all of a sudden I had to kind of grow a pair of balls and <laughs> start driving cars. What can I say? Uh, surprisingly enough, I never reviewed a John Carpenter film on this channel before, which is surprising because I love me some John Carpenter. He's got so many classic films. Halloween, Big Trouble in Little China, They Live, In the Mouth of Madness. What else? Escape from New York. Guys, he's got so many great films and they have such a unique style and I love a director when you watch their movies, you can immediately tell, wow, this is a ex-director film. Wow, this is a Woody Allen movie. Wow, this is a Tarantino movie. This is a John Carpenter movie. And John Carpenter has such a unique style, very suspenseful, very specific cinematography, the soundtrack that's very synth and atmospheric. I love John Carpenter's style when it comes to filmmaking, which makes me a pretty big John Carpenter fan. However, surprisingly enough, this is the first time I watched this movie, which I have no clue why. I didn't even know <laughs> John Carpenter directed this movie, quite honestly. So, uh, I just discovered a new John Carpenter movie. Yay for that. This movie opens, it has a very awesome opening credit scene where uh, they're playing rock and roll music and Christine is getting built in this factory. And then in the first act of this movie, we're introduced to Arnie, who's our protagonist in this. And what I noticed about that first act is that the dialogue is very sexual. The guy who sells the car to Arnie says that this car is the second best thing behind pussy juice. Arnie is talking to his friend in his car and saying that he was playing Scrabble and wanted to spell out the word fellatio. And overall, the teenagers in this movie are drooling over their female classmates. Very sexual opening to this movie. I don't understand what John Carpenter was trying to do with that, to be honest. And that kind of made me kind of not enjoy the first act of this movie. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind sexual talk in a movie. It just kind of felt a little immature and pointless. It kind of felt like John Carpenter was trying to have his characters talk like real teenagers. But real teenagers aren't that obsessed with sex. I mean, when I was a teenager, yes, I was obsessed with sex. Arguably, still now I am obsessed with sex. But I don't think it was to the extent that John Carpenter portrayed it in this film. However, this movie immediately picks up once Christine starts doing her thing, once Christine becomes a killer car. The scene that makes you realize that this car is up to no good is a scene where Arnie and his girlfriend go to the drive-in theater and the doors lock and carbon monoxide starts going inside the car and Arnie's girlfriend is like ah, 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 and the lights are flashing and it's a very terrifying scene. Guys, I think carbon monoxide is terrifying as well. My roommates used to make fun of me because I was super paranoid about carbon monoxide. But guys, I think it's so stupid. People are scared of ghosts, but ghosts aren't real. Carbon monoxide is real. Even if ghosts are real, what are they going to do? Woo! And scare you? And you're like, okay, that was awesome. Carbon monoxide, you can't see it, you can't smell it, and it kills you. Guys, that's terrifying. 
The cinematography in this is very beautiful, as you would expect from a John Carpenter movie. I love the contrast of this cherry red, beautiful, fiery car against the Night City, which makes the main antagonist stand out. I also like the car. The car has a personality in this movie, which I wasn't expecting. I was kind of just expecting this car to go around and kill people randomly. But the car kind of acts like a jealous girlfriend. And whenever Arnie starts talking to a girl, the car becomes jealous and will try to kill the girl, which I thought was a pretty unique spin. We see so many times that guys are obsessed with their cars, and this is a clever spin on that. The soundtrack of this movie works very well. Not only John Carpenter's score, which we all know John Carpenter is a great music film composer, but I like the choice of songs in here as well. Sometimes the choice of songs would match what's going on. There's a part where the main character Arnie is drooling over his car and they're playing some doo-wop music from the 50s where the singer is repeating I love you, I love you, I love you. And then there's another part where someone is dying in the car and knocking on the glass of the car and the lyrics of the song is like you keep knocking but you can't come in. It's very subtle and the music in this film is always 50s rock and roll. And the VFX in this movie. Can we take a second to appreciate the VFX in this movie? The VFX in this are just beautiful. And I'm looking at the behind the scenes immediately after the movie is done. I'm like, how the fuck did they do some of those scenes? So there's scenes where Christine is all damaged and broken down. And then regenerates and becomes a new car again. They have it so that we see the transformation happening. And the way they did that is that they used rubber. They used molds. And for some of it, they actually destroyed a car and then played the footage in reverse to look, make it look like the car is regenerating, which is really clever. Just goes to show that practical effects are never going to beat CG if you know how to use them correctly. The problem is people sometimes don't know how to use them correctly. But John Carpenter is a master filmmaker, ladies and gentlemen. He knows what he's doing. I love the fact that as the film goes on, Arnie and Christine's relationship becomes more and more obsessive. It kind of becomes like this toxic relationship, but between a man and his car. It sounds goofy as I say it, but when I watch the movie, it kind of works. I reviewed on this channel the movie Killer Sofa, which was a train wreck of a movie. And it's one of those movies that has the tongue-in-cheek approach. It's like, yeah, it's stupid. It's a killer sofa. But this movie can have a goofy premise. But it's done very seriously, and it actually works in this movie. Is it John Carpenter's greatest movie? No. His greatest movie is The Thing. His second best movie is Assault on Precinct 13. And I still rather movies like Halloween, and I rather uh, Escape from New York and They Live. But this is a clever little movie here. It's not the most in-your-face John Carpenter movie, but it's quite enjoyable. It's a good date movie. I wish this played at a drive-in theater or something. I would watch it at the drive-in theater. But overall, very impressed by this movie. I liked it quite a bit. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. More Stephen King reviews coming up. Just tune in tomorrow.